dangerous. Troubled? That woman's not wearing underwear. Is that all you can think about? Food and sex? Yes. Please, focus. Look out! Hey, it's Jay! No time for small talk. We're late. Hetty, hold the elevator. Hetty. I think Louise is so sweet. I think this woman is wearing underwear. I think there's too many people in this elevator. And I think you are all idiots. That's gonna work. How's that research manual coming? Great, Mr. Brackett. I really appreciate this opportunity. It's a heck of a lot of work. I hope I don't crack. Well, I hope you don't either. Because I can't put into words the incredible importance of this manual. Well, if it's so important, how come I'm not working on it? Because when I asked for volunteers, you pretended to lapse into a coma. <laughs> However, I do have some additional work. <laughs> okay, Herman, let's get back to it. Herman? Oh, I'm sorry, Louise. I'm a little distracted. My father is coming to town today. Well, I'd say you can hide out at my place, but I think I already have three people hiding there. <laughs> Louise, I'm sure there's no one hiding at your place. You're just under a lot of pressure because of this manual. I know. I'm on the edge. I need help, man. Herman, I can handle this one. Okay, Louise, take a deep, calming breath. You're right. Ah... <sighs> Are you better? Yes, I think I am. Thank you. Ah! <laughs> I love to do that. It was not very nice. Just relax, Louise. Forget these lunatics. We have a crisis here. Our father's coming. I love Dad. Well, we all do, but you have to admit he can be very critical of us. Jeez, it stinks in his brain. <laughs> the man works in a tire factory and is offended by the odor in our brain. What can we do for you, Dad? It's been two years, Herman. When are you going to give up this pipe dream of being a writer and come work with me in a tire factory? Look, we're not interested in working in the tire factory. Dad, we're a writer. What have you written lately? Dear Penthouse Forum. <laughs> I never... I was going to explain that to you. Dad. I don't have time for explanations. I have tires to sell. I just wish you'd realize this writer thing is a dead end and come back and work with me. Maybe we should consider that offer. I miss Ohio. I agree. I think we should stand up, be a man, and move back in with Mommy and Daddy. So, Herman, why is your father coming? What's the occasion? Well, he didn't say, but I suspect he's coming to get me to move back to Ohio. He probably wants to pull some strings and get me into the management trainee program at the tire company. I'm sure your dad will understand if you want to stay here and be a writer. You don't know my dad, Louise. He didn't get to be a tire executive by following his emotions. You know, it's always take care of business, take care of the family. Do what you gotta do. He doesn't understand dreams. Well, that's too bad, because I had a doozy last night. <laughs> Louise, these are different kinds of dreams. I don't think so. I dreamt I was you, and I wanted to be a writer in New York. <laughs> so, what happened? Well, your career was going beautifully. Oh, really? Yeah, you were writing books and movies. No kidding. And then, at the height of your success, you married Mr. Bracken and took a turn for the worse. <laughs> you argued bitterly, and the children suffered. <laughs> Louise, I'm very worried about you. Me? Pal, you're the one who married Mr. Bracken. <laughs> Louise, I appreciate all the hard work. Maybe you should relax and have lunch. Can't do it. It'll only slow me down. I'm a dynamo. <laughs> well, look, if it's too much work, just make a first pass at it, and I'll have Hetty proof it for you. <laughs> oh, never mind. Pass the salt. Hey, everybody, this is my father, Dad. This is everybody. 
<laughs> I'm Paul Bragg and Herman works for me in the research room. But we have more than a boss-employee relationship. Actually, uh, I treat Herman like my own son. No kidding. <laughs> Any chance you're paying the balance of his college loans? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. What kind of father are you? Dad, Dad why don't you go sit right over there I'll, and I'll be right with you. Oh, Luis, I finished chapter 16. Oh, oh, and we still have to prove 7 through 10 and... Herman, and... Herman, relax. You're a nervous wreck. I just got Louise under control. Oh, yeah, you're under control? Yes, perfectly. Yeah, I was just going to say, we still have to prove the glossary. The glossary? Oh, my God! <laughs> hey, is your dad here? Yeah, yeah, he's sitting right over there. Oh, boy, you two look nothing alike. You sure he's your father? <laughs> I suspect the pool man. <laughs> say, we didn't have a pool. All the more reason to suspect the pool man. <laughs> Jay, I have to go talk to my father. Oh, I wish my father would come visit me. Why don't you invite him? I don't think the parole board would approve. I'll have the turkey sandwich. Yeah, and I'll have a hamburger well done. Watch, he's gonna tell us we should have ordered it medium rare. Nice to see you, Herman. Is he gonna tell me to order my burger medium rare? Life's too short to worry about hamburgers. <laughs> he's just trying to lull us into a false sense of security. So, been dating much? No, I date. I date, but I'm not ready to settle down. As long as you're happy. Maybe he's on drugs. <laughs> Dad, you want a beer with your sandwich? No, thanks. I'm on drugs. <laughs> what? Taking antihistamines for my allergies. So, how's the writing coming? Okay, okay, let me stop you right there, Dad. For the last time, I am happy in New York. I am going to be a writer, and I'm not going to work in the tire business in Ohio. Neither am I. What? When did you make this decision? Oh, somewhere between the time when they said, clean out your desk, and when security escorted me off the premises. <laughs> you were fired? Well, they called it forced retirement. Well, that's terrible. No, 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 no. I think it may be a blessing in disguise. I think I may have shortchanged you when you were growing up by always working. Well, what's done is done. We, we didn't get enough quality time together. You did what you could. So I've come to New York to stay with you for a while. Well, you... What? <laughs> well, I'm just trying to do some of the things I was too busy to do when you were growing up. By the way, I finally built that tree house you kids have been nagging me about. Dad, it's a little late for a tree house. No, it's never too late. Ernie brought an action down the street, saw it, built one for his son. His son is 65 years old. Like I say, it's never too late. Well, let's start bonding. Look, Dad, it's really great seeing you, but I'm sorry. I have a lot of work to do. I don't even have time to eat. Look, here are the keys to my apartment. I'll meet you there after work, okay? Chapter 20 is almost done. Isn't this great, Herman? We're burning the midnight oil. We're putting the pedal to the metal. We're pulling an all-nighter. We're not going to pull an all-nighter, Louise. Well, that's some bad news, because I just had six cups of coffee, and I am flying. <laughs> Hi there. How's it going? Nice to see you. What's new? Good, good. Listen, I'm just going to run up and down the stairs for a while. Your friend has a lot of pep. Well, you ready to go home? Yeah, Dad, I'm, I'm working on a special project. Oh! Oh, I've been there. Yeah, when they brought out those RX-78 radials, I had to put in a lot of hours. See, nobody could see why they should buy them. So I had to do a lot of hard selling, but it, it paid off because I sold more of those than anyone else in my division. And as I recall, those tires were defective. When you went over 50 miles per hour, they exploded. Hey, Mike Wallace couldn't prove that, and neither can you. <laughs> Dad, I have to get back to work. Oh, what are you doing? Maybe, uh, maybe I can help? Yeah, I'm... I'm writing a manual explaining how to use the Microtech Interoffice Research Retrieval System. Maybe I can watch? <laughs> this is so touching. He wants to spend time with us. Yeah, well, where was he when we needed him? Why are you so bitter about him? Because I've been hurt. Do you remember that time we won first prize in the science fair? We made that volcano that erupted with baking soda? Yeah, as I recall, that volcano blew up the two Asian students next to us who created the perpetual motion machine. <laughs> hey! Principal Brundage couldn't prove that, and neither can you. The point is, we won. And where was Dad? Selling tires in Atlanta. Yeah, and the time we hit that Grand Slam in Little League, where was Dad? Selling tires in Pittsburgh. Sometimes it was important for Dad to be away. Yeah, that's right. Like, 
the time Paul Carlin's hamster bit us. Where was that? On that top secret mission with the President of the United States. <laughs> That's what Mom said. No, no, she just told us that because she didn't want to hurt our feelings. He was really selling tires in Scranton. Well, then the hell with them. <laughs> Dad, I'm sorry. It's just that this project is very important to me. Oh, I was hoping we could spend some time together. We will. We will. I promise. Bad news, Herman. I just had my seventh cup of coffee and all the bathrooms are locked. <laughs> Louise, I'll take it from here. Why don't you call it a night? Dad, I'm going to be a while. Why don't, why don't I meet you back home? Come on. I'll give you a lift. Louise, you don't have a car. No. Just drank two quarts of coffee. I'll carry him home piggyback. <laughs> She's just kidding. Well, I did it. I got in touch with my father. That's great. Yeah, seeing Herman with his dad made me realize I needed to let my dad know how much I care. So I sent him some smokes to grease the screws. <laughs> what? She sent him some cigarettes in order to bribe the guards. How do you know that? I'm writing a crime novel. I based the main character on me. It's called The Man Who Knew Too Much. <laughs> I knew that. Hi, Herman. How's it going with your dad? Well, when I got home late last night, he was already asleep. And when I woke up this morning, he was gone. I just haven't had any time to talk to him at all. And now, oh, I have no idea where he is. Oh, I'm sure he'll turn up somewhere. Can I get that trash can for you? Oh, thank <laughs> Dad! <laughs> Lisa's great. But there's something about Sharon. Sharon's okay. But Lisa, whew, what a knockout. Why is the grass always greener on the other side? You lucky dog. Lucky dog. Why ask why? Try a less filling beer with a lot more taste. Bud Dry. It's one thing. Mm, nice. That's beyond question. From the moment she met him, she was crazy about him. I love you, Nick, and you love me! Now look, you're too young for me. There's nothing between us. But if she can't have him, no one can. The Crush, rated R, starts Friday, April 2nd. Ask anyone who's driven a Ford lately. You may be in for a few surprises. Some wild, exciting, in-your-face, move it or lose it, take no prisoners, don't look back, women and children first, get down to it, winner-take-all kind of surprises. You got it. With each new day, you find a way to be your best. Gillette Sensor, the closest, safest, the best shave a man can get. Gillette, the best a man can get. Marvin Kittman. New York Newsday calls it astoundingly good. This story made me cry. An all-new Tribeca, Tuesday. With Alicia as the star, Neil's first movie is sure to be a classic. Just like that great scene that Coppola did in Godfather 2, you know, I'm going through the same emotion that Diane Keaton had. I'm standing in a fake fog and my co-star has a giant sucker on his head. Blind Blind, next. Late one night, Dave Thomas woke up from a deep sleep with the inspiration for a new cheeseburger from Wendy's. Steak sauce. Introducing Wendy's new deluxe steak sauce cheeseburger. Because everyone loves steak sauce. Especially on a quarter pound of fresh beef topped with sautéed onions and Swiss. Wendy's deluxe steak sauce cheeseburger. It's a dream come true, but only for a limited time. Sure beats counting cheap. Dad, what are you doing? My job. I just got hired as a janitor at Waterton. Yeah. Oh, here. Wait, let me get that for you. Thank you. Louise, my father is not here to clean up after you. Actually, I think he is. <laughs> Why are you doing this? Well, I figured if I worked at the same place you do and you had some free time, we could spend it together. I see. So when you get a moment, just give a buzz down to custodial and I'll be up in two minutes. Dad, don't you think you're a little overqualified for this? I mean, you were an executive. Times are tough. I was lucky to get this job. If it weren't for Paul's recommendation, I wouldn't have gotten it. Paul? Paul recommended you? Paul, can I talk to you? <laughs> what have you done to my father? Well, he told me he was bored. So you put him to work as a janitor. 
Harmon, you have a very condescending attitude toward custodial services. It's a perfectly dignified profession. Yeah, come. <laughs> Now, you have to understand something. When a man has spent his life working, he can't just stop and do nothing. He's used to taking care of himself. It would be nice if you were a little supportive. Dad. Dad. Please. Go back to Ohio. But things were going so well. No, they weren't. We were getting to know each other. No, we weren't. Uh, we have so much to look forward to. No, we don't. Well, it wasn't for lack of trying on my part. Oh, Dad. You've made your point, but I'm in the middle of a very, very important project. This manual Not can a be... manual, the manual. You know, son, I've gotten a lot of insight since I started working here. But you had this job for less than an hour. Well, I'm a quick study. The point is that you think that manual is important, but everything, no matter how important, ends up in here. Hey, look at this, see? The guy who wrote this memo probably had a choice of going out with his dad or writing this memo, and he chose to write this memo. Well, whoever he is, I bet his father didn't show up out of the blue after 25 years of ignoring it. I didn't ignore you. If anything, I was ignoring your mother. You just got caught in the crossfire. <laughs> That's why I'm trying to make it up to you. By getting a job as a janitor? I got this job to be near you. Well, you got this job because you needed something to do. It has nothing to do with me. Well, I'm sorry you feel that way. Yeah, well, me too. Uh, Herm, we're gonna have to talk about your dad. Jay, I don't think I can right now. Uh, well, you're gonna have to, Herm. I think he stole my wallet. <laughs> what? When I was down here for lunch, I left my wallet in my briefcase in my office. I got back, the wallet was missing, and the office was clean. Obviously, the janitor stole it. Why'd you leave your wallet upstairs? So that when I order a drink, I can go, whoops, I forgot my wallet, and then some unsuspecting sap will buy it for me. <laughs> Do you mean all those times I bought you oh, a you're, drink? You're changing the subject. Can I get you a drink? Oh, uh, I don't have my wallet. Herm? <laughs> Two beers. Point is, your father stole my wallet. He wouldn't steal your wallet. He's my father. Well, the jury's still out on that one. <laughs> Jay, can we at least go talk to him? Is he at your apartment? No. No, we had a fight. I don't know where he is. Oh, boy. I'm sorry. Did you count the silverware? <laughs> Look, he wouldn't steal my silverware, and he didn't take your wallet. All right, okay. If he should happen to find it, just have him return it to me. No, no questions asked. Now, what's the matter with you? I still feel awful about that argument we had with Dad. Oh, he had it coming. Now, maybe he'll think twice about all those years that he wasn't around. He did think twice about it. That's why he's here. Yeah, well, that's not our problem. I say we call Mom, tell her to come here and drag Dad back to Ohio. Herman, Herman, you gotta help me. What is it? Well, the manual is due on Friday. I'm in over my head and I got a caffeine rush that would make Keith Richards jealous. Please don't worry. We'll get through this. We will make the deadline. We're in this together. We're in this together. That's right. Now leave me alone. I have to call my mother. <laughs> Give me the phone. He's using it. For steamy threesomes, press one. <laughs> Who are you talking to? We need a third. Do you swing? Will you give me that? Hi, Mom. Mom, it's Herman. Yeah, he's here. He's keeping himself busy. Listen, you have to come get him. Why not? No, he didn't tell me. You're separated? Dad, don't step there. Oh, what do you people do to these floors? Can I talk to you? You said what you had to say. Dad, I just spoke to Mom. Oh, yeah, did I mention my wife's divorcing me? She is not divorcing you. Hey, you kids, don't walk there. <laughs> Dad, look, we have to talk about this. Okay, we're having a trial separation. Hey, she doesn't love me anymore. <laughs> you're standing on the court. <laughs> Sorry. Look, she told me she loves you as much as she always did, but that you've just been impossible since you lost your job. She's just mad because I wouldn't let her in the treehouse. <laughs> you really think that's it? No. Look, I worked my whole life to support our family, and when I need a little help and understanding, no one's there for me. Let's be honest, Dad. It's not like you were there for us. Well, I'm sorry. If I could go back and change all that, I would. Now, you can either meet me halfway or hold a grudge. 
I vote to hold a grudge. I second that grudge. No, don't you see? He's trying to write some of the things he feels he did wrong. And what do we do? We were too busy. We've become him. Not quite. He's got a better job. Janitors can go in the ladies' washroom any time they want. <laughs> the point is, we're doing the same thing he did to us. Look, I'm sorry, but we have work. We will always have work. We will always have extra work, but we will not always have our father. And what are we going to tell Bracken? What about Louise? Mr. Bracken will give us time off, and I'm sure Louise can manage on her own. I can't do it! I can't do it! I can't do it! Louise, calm down. Just tell yourself you can do it. I can do it! I can do it! I can do it! I can do it! You can, Louise. You're tough. I'm tough. You're tenacious. I'm tenacious. You don't know the meaning of the word quit. I don't know the meaning of the word tenacious. <laughs> All right, enough, Louise. Alan. Louise, I just spoke with Mr. Decker. He chewed my head off over that manual. He wants it right away. Mr. Bracken, Herman is abandoning me. He's going to make me finish the manual alone. Please, don't make me do it. <laughs> now, Louise, pull yourself together. Herman knows how important that manual is to me and to the company. He would never back out. Mr. Bracken, I can't finish the manual. What? <laughs> you need to take some time off from work. Herman, this company needs that manual. The manual, the manual. Let me tell you something, Mr. Bracken. You may think that manual is important, but everything, no matter how important, ends up here. Look at this. I bet this is pretty important to someone once. The man who knew too much, a novel by Paul Bracken. Uh, my, I had to change the title. Uh, that Hitchcock guy stole it from me. Come into my office. <laughs> Herman, I picked you for this assignment because I thought you could handle it. Mr. Bracken, I wouldn't do this unless it was absolutely necessary. I know this project is important, but Louise can handle the remaining work. <laughs> I didn't say it would be pretty. I just said she'd get it done. Herman, that's not the point. This is your job as well as Louise's. Now, what's so important that can't wait? But it's my dad, Mr. Brack. And you, you see, he always put work before family. And there were a lot of times I needed him, and he wasn't there. Now he needs me, and I'm not making the same mistake. Herman, I have a business to run, and I cannot condone you taking time off when I need you to finish this manual. Nonetheless, I hope my daughters take time off when I lose my job and go nutsy, Fagan. Thank you for understanding, sir. Louise. Mr. Bracken, did you force him to stay? Oh, uh, Herman is going to take a couple of days off. Ah. Now, calm down. <laughs> I'm personally going to roll up my sleeves and help you finish this manual. Ah. But we'll work side by side, day and night together if we have to. Ah. Herman, uh, you better leave. I think you're upsetting her. What's wrong, Hetty? Oh, Herman, I'm so happy. Getting in touch with my father has turned out so well. He sent me a picture of himself to put in my wallet. This is him from the front, and this is him from the side. It's very nice. Dad, why aren't you in uniform? Ah, oh, this custodial thing wasn't working out. Some idiot accused me of stealing, and it turns out they found his jerk's wallet in the cushions of the sofa. You don't know this guy, Jay Nichols, do you? <laughs> Nichols, Nichols. Uh, no, never heard of him. <sighs> well, I gotta get going. My plane leaves in an hour. What? You mean you're going back to Ohio? Yeah, I talked to your mother on the phone. This trial separation is a dismal failure. We, we miss each other. I'm... Sorry for coming here and bothering you. Take care, Herman. He's out of our hair. We're off the hook. Let's celebrate. Yeah! <laughs> Are you suggesting we let him go back to Ohio without resolving any of our problems? Yeah. yeah, yeah that's that's exactly that's right. Right. I think not. Why don't you stay in New York for a while? No, no. You made your position clear. I'm going home. Well, come on. We'll spend some time together. It'll be fun. What about your work? What about your precious manual? I told Mr. Bracken that you were more important than work. I don't know, Herman, maybe you were right. I thought I could make up for lost time, but maybe the time is just lost. Well, I'm willing to forget about all that if you are. Hell, there's no use crying over spilled milk. Easy for you to say, you don't have to clean it up. <laughs> hey, Dad, you still want to see the Statue of Liberty? Sure. I can really only stay a couple of days, though. I should really get back home. Your mother told me something that was rather disturbing. Oh, really? What's that? She's going to hang curtains in my treehouse. 
<laughs> Homer and Bart are both determined to pull off the ultimate April Fool's prank. Who'll have the last laugh? Find out on The Simpsons' April Fool's Day special, Thursday. Now, stay tuned for an all-new Flying Blind.